What's up guys? It's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. I'm here in Denver, Colorado, and today I'm gonna be cloning some mushrooms that were sent to me from um, Blake out in Michigan. So he had emailed me about a week ago that he found some wild enoki mushrooms and a couple oyster mushrooms. And then he was kind enough to ship me some samples of these mushrooms and it smells fresh so hopefully these are still viable um yeah so i've normally when i clone my mushrooms um i uh use them as fresh as possible like the fresher the mushrooms the better chance they have for survival and um i've never tried it in a package that was sent through the mail um, we don't even ship our mushrooms because usually they get damaged, especially these days with the mail. Um, it's been, you know, quite hectic getting our next day deliveries when we need them. So we um, don't ship our products except for the cultures and everything on our Etsy. We do ship, just not our fresh mushrooms. So I'm really excited to um, try these out. I've got some water auger and some MEA auger um, that I'm going to be cloning these on and um, some V9 too. I'll try it out on some V9 auger and I'm really excited to uh, have this experiment. I've got my box of mushrooms here. These are going to be the MEA plates, um, the V9 plates and the water auger. I'm going to try transferring them all onto water auger and then the between you know the next uh, four plates I'll decide on which one looks the most viable I took a peek inside here and let's kind of go through the packaging alright so you can see right off the bat that they're wrapped in plastic um, normally I would suggest you know storing your mushrooms in a brown paper bag or um, in this box packed with some brown cardboard or like paper um, the plastic isn't gonna breathe as well as cardboard would but I'm still gonna give it my best shot so I can feel you know the the excess moisture build up um, but there is some paper towel so oh nice so this is the elm oyster you can see he wrote nicely elm on there um, it definitely has you know the gills typical with an oyster mushroom now I'm not um, I'm not that versed in identification all of my cultures were verified and you know I work with um, expert uh, foragers who are certified and have been doing it since the 80s but I trust Blake that you know um, this is the Elm Oyster and he sent me some pictures and I will go ahead and verify this before I uh, grow it out or um, if I ever sell any cultures um, I'll do some verification and kind of go through those processes as well all right, so bag number two, we've got, it looks like another oyster mushroom here. So this is much more familiar looking oyster. Um, up right here, it looks like it's a fall oyster. So we've got an elm oyster and a fall oyster mushroom, probably Plurata species. You can see that um, they're frozen, so I don't know if these were sent frozen or it's uh, been about 10 degrees outside, so it might have been frozen in the delivery process. Looks like we got some kind of a larva, which isn't a good sign. Alright, so I'm going to keep this oyster separate. Probably not as viable as this one over here. All right, and then in this third bag, it looks like some velvet 
foot mushrooms or enoki. So we've got a cap here. This one looks really nice here. So I'll probably go off this stem. Um, so you can see it appears to be an enoki mushroom. Um, I can't really tell because it's, you know, not, I don't have all the stages of growth, but it's pretty common in a velvet foot that you'll get that discoloration on the bottom. And it looks like it was attached to a wood substrate. This looks like um, some rotting wood and some nice stems here. And all right, we've got cluster right here. So these are the three species that we're gonna be cloning from Blake from Michigan. Um, thanks again, Blake, for sending these. And maybe in the future, I could establish some kind of a project for cloning various wild mushrooms. All right, so let's get into the culture. So I'm gonna start with what I think is the cleanest mushroom and then work my way back. Um, so we've got the elm oyster, suspect elm, and then the velvet foot or enoki, and then another, plur like a pleuratus, it looks like pleuratus ostriatus possible but labeled a fall oyster, presumptively. Um, so these are MEA, and then we got our V9 auger and some water auger plates. Um, if you haven't checked out our video on the colors of mycology, there's a lot of information on different selective and differential medias, and we also did a water auger video. Um, so I chose to use some water auger instead of antibiotic auger because um, I find that it you know, doesn't make a whole lot of difference in results and the water auger isn't going to use antibiotics that could build up in the environment and cause you know, problems in the future. But um, I have nothing against you know, using antibiotics, I just don't choose to do it um, in my auger. Alright. So, I think that we have the best chance with this elm oyster. So I'm going to start off with that. And I'm going to run all of them on the water auger and then I'll do the elm on the V9 and the water auger and the enoki on the V9 and the water auger and I feel like this one's a very long stretch so I'll just do this one on two water augers all right so the first thing is to crack open the mushroom you can see this one has a really nice white growth on it or a white middle so some good healthy tissue We do sell two packs for $5 on Etsy if you're interested in getting some plates.
So there's Al Moister. Set that off to the side there. Alright guys, so I've got my Elm Oyster and I did another water auger um, from the other side. My camera was just slipping. So I'm taking a look at these enoki mushrooms and normally I like to clone from the stem region, so I'll try to grab, you know, some tissue from up here, but it looks like um, this one is a bit far gone. I'll give it a shot, though. Doesn't hurt to try. Oop. There's a Noki. Then I saw this cap here. Sometimes you can get some really nice tissue from the cap, but ideally, you know, you'd want to use a much better specimen. But these were shipped in from Michigan, so, you know, gotta work, work with what you have. This seems like a bit of a better piece right here. A V9. Alright. So we've got presumptive enoki, presumptive elm oyster, and now we'll get into this oyster mushroom that I definitely have my doubts on this one. But it smells good. Trying to grab that nice piece of tissue there. Yep. Alright, so there you have it. I'll label these up. Fall, oyster. All right, guys, so there you have it. Um, my first attempt at cloning uh, wild mushrooms from a different part of the country. This is a really exciting project for me, something that I've been thinking about for a while. And then um, Blake from Michigan reached out to me through email. And um, thanks so much for sending these mushrooms, or um, <coughs> excuse me, for sending these mushrooms over. Um, I'll keep you guys updated on how these are going. I have a lot of hope for the Elm Oyster and then, you know, the Enoki and the Fall Oyster Mushroom were frozen. So I don't know if you're watching this, Blake, but um, it could have been the mail or something. There was a really, they were just waterlogged by the time they got to me. So in the future, you know, if you have a mushroom that you're 100% sure on what it is and you would like me to clone it, um, reach out to email 
and um, and I'll think of a better system for this, but I feel like that could be a really cool project in the fall or um, even over winter or next spring or you know in the long term just to build a library of wild mushrooms. I know Paul Stamets has a pretty extensive library and it can be done um, using you know private labs and um, it can be done privately is what I'm trying to say. So just uh, feel free to comment below if you have any ideas on how this process could be improved or implications for the future. But um, thanks for following along. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe below if you're looking forward to seeing what happens with these clone species or if you're looking forward to more mycology videos like these. Um, yep. And um, check out our Etsy. We've got our plates for sale as long as well as um, our other cultures. I'm doing a bunch of liquid cultures right here that I'm, I'm just waiting for the QC for those before I start pulling more syringes and getting our cultures back out before the holiday season. And um, yeah, so we're just finishing up. Three weeks left at Cherry Creek and if you want any fresh mushrooms, come say hello. We'll be over at Cherry Creek in Denver for the next three weekends and then we're going to be closing down for a bit. Um, reorganizing our our setup down here and um, teaching some classes in the winter so we'll be doing some online um, lectures as well which I'm really excited to uh, launch that in January so stay tuned for that as well alright guys until next time much love